Hi students, welcome back. Hopefully you've had an opportunity to review how to graph polar coordinates and you're kind of familiar with that. Um, and today we're going to start actually doing some calculus things with polar coordinates. So Hannah Kwan told me that she liked the pink pen that I used in a previous video and I thought, why am I always using blue? Let's switch it up a little bit. So today, Hannah Kwan, this pink pen is for you. Okay. First thing we want to talk about is converting polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates and rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. This is actually much easier than it seems. So first we are asked to convert the following polar points to rectangular points. So we have 4 and 2 pi over 3. So 4 is our r and 2 pi over 3 is our theta. And we can actually use these formulas up here to convert them. So x our x coordinate is going to be equal to r cosine of 2 pi over 3. And our y coordinate is going to be equal to r sine of 2 pi over 3 theta. And then um, we're not really quite done yet because uh, we can actually solve this. So the cosine, so this is going to be 4 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, cosine is going to be negative, uh, what is it, negative radical 3 over 2. And um, if I simplify that, then I'm going to have negative 2 radical 3. That should be an equal sign. Uh, and my y coordinate, we're going to have 4 times the sine is going to be 1 half, so that's going to be 2. So I can finally write my point is going to be negative 2 radical 3 comma 2. There it is. There's my xy coordinates for the exact same polar coordinates. Let's do one more. We've got radical 5 pi over 6. So my x coordinate is going to be radical 5 cosine of pi over 6. My y coordinate is going to be radical 5 sine of pi over 6. Cosine of pi over 6 is going to be, so we're going to have radical 5 times radical 3 over 2. This is radical 5 times 1 half, I believe. Yes. So this gives us radical 15 over 2. This gives us radical 5 over 2. And that's it. That's our xy coordinate. So radical 15 over 2 comma radical 5 over 2. Okay. So far so good. Can you see this? Maybe the pink pen was a bad idea. Now yeah, let's stick with it. Okay. Let's convert some rectangular points to polar points. Here we have negative 2 and 2 radical 3. Well, our, to convert rectangular to polar, we've got r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And tangent of theta is equal to y over x. So we can do this. Our r squared, or let's just do r. r is going to be equal to the square root of negative 2 squared plus 2 radical 3 squared which is just going to equal the square root of 4 plus, what would that be, 4 times 3 is 12, right? So that equals the square root of 16, which equals 4. So r is equal to 4. And theta, theta is going to be equal to, well, I'll start this way. The tangent of theta is equal to y over x, so we're, is equal to 2 radical 3 over negative 2. So tangent of theta is equal to negative, <laughs> radical 3. So theta is equal to tangent inverse of negative radical 3, which is equal to negative pi over 3. So my coordinate here is 4 comma negative pi over 3. Okay, let's do another one. r here is going to be equal to 5 squared plus negative 5 squared, which is equal to 25 plus 25, which is equal to radical 50, which is equal to 5 radical 2. Okay. Um, Theta is going to be equal to the tangent inverse of negative uh, 5 over 5, which of course just equals negative 1. Tangent inverse of negative 1 is going to be negative pi over 4. So our uh, polar coordinate is 5 radical 2 comma negative pi over 4. Okay, hopefully not too challenging. 
You guys, I might have to switch to green. I don't know. Pink looks like it's not showing up that well in the video. I'm sorry, Hannah Kwan. Okay. Let's actually now, instead of converting just points, let's convert some full equations. We want to convert the rectangular equations to polar. So we have y equals 4. Well, what's that going to be as a polar equation? Well, we know that um, y is equal to r sine theta. So in this case, r sine theta is equal to 4. So r is going to be equal to 4 over sine of theta, which we can just rewrite as 4 cosecant theta. And that's it. That's your whole equation. What about here? We have y equals 3x plus 2. Well, we know we can replace y with r sine theta is equal to 3. We can replace x with r cosine theta plus 2. Okay, And we can start doing a little bit of math here. So we've got r sine theta minus 3r cosine theta equals 2. If I factor out an r, I'm left with sine theta minus 3 cosine theta equals 2. So r is going to be equal to 2 divided by sine theta minus 3 cosine theta. Okay. Right? Just kind of some fun manipulative math here. Let's do one more. So if I have y equals 2x squared, I can rewrite this as r sine theta equals 2 times oops, r cosine theta squared. So r sine theta is equal to 2r squared cosine squared theta, right? If I divide both sides by r, I'm going to end up with sine theta equals 2r cosine squared theta, right? So I can, uh, I don't know what happened to that 2 there. But anyway, so I can move some things here. I'm going to have 1 half sine theta over cosine squared theta is going to be equal to r. And if I want, I can rewrite that even a little bit more, that r is equal to 1 half tangent theta secant theta. Okay. All right, let's convert some polar equations to rectangulars now. Here, I have r equals negative 3 secant theta. Well, I can rewrite this as r over the secant of theta is equal to negative 3, right? Which is the same, it's, it's divided by secant, it's the same as r cosine theta, right? Is equal to negative 3. And r cosine theta is equal to x, so x is equal to negative 3. Right? What about this one? We have r equals 4 over 1 plus 2 cosine theta. Well, I'm going to multiply here. I've got r times 1 plus 2 cosine theta is equal to 4. And um, that is the same as r plus 2r cosine theta is equal to 4, right, if I distribute. So this r cosine theta we know is our x. So now I have r plus 2x is equal to 4. And I can rewrite this um, as r equals 4 minus 2x, okay? Now I can rewrite r as the square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 minus 2x. And if I square both sides, this one's very complicated, but it is going to work, I promise. We get x squared plus y squared equals 16 minus 16x plus 4x squared. So I can finally rewrite this entire thing as 3x squared plus y squared plus 16x minus 16 is equal to 0. And that's our rectangular equation. Okay. One more example of this. r equals 3 over cosine theta plus 2 sine theta. Well, r times cosine theta plus 2 sine theta is equal to 3. So you have r cosine theta plus 2r sine theta is equal to 3. Well, this is x plus 2 times this is y equals 3. Simple, easy. That one was much easier than the previous one. Okay. All right. So let's now talk about calculus. Now that we've converted these enough, 
let's talk about calculus and slope of tangent lines. So if we're given uh, a polar function, dy over dx, our derivative, is equal to the derivative of y over the derivative of theta divided by the derivative of x over the derivative of theta. Okay? Um, I think it's easiest to just have x of theta, y of theta first, and then find those derivatives and then divide. Okay? Then, how are we going to find our horizontal and vertical tangents? Well, we can set our horizontal, our dy d theta equal to zero, the top. Vertical, we can set our bottom equal to zero. And if these are equal to one another and they're both equal to zero, we have no conclusion. But we can kind of figure that out as we go. So let's do an example here. We want to find at which points the cart cardioid, I spelled that wrong, but anyway, cardioid um, given by r equals 1 plus cosine theta has vertical or horizontal tangent lines. Okay, so what we're going to do is first find our we're going to set this in terms of x of theta and y of theta, okay? So r is going to be, let me pause here for a second. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this. r is equal to x squared plus y squared, right? So x squared plus y squared, why am I doing this? You can see that. r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So r is actually equal to the square root of that, right? So 1 plus cosine theta is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So um, x squared plus y squared equals 1 plus cosine theta squared. Oh, I don't like what I'm doing right now. Okay, ignore everything I just said. I'm so sorry. Um, not everything, but at least what I was trying to do when I solved that. So our x coordinate is going to be, of course, x is equal to r cosine theta. So in this situation, we already know our r. x is going to be equal to 1 plus cosine theta times cosine theta. So that equals cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. Okay? That's our x value. Now I can find dx. So dx over d theta is equal to uh, derivative of cosine is negative sine theta. Uh, oops, going to be minus 2 cosine theta sine theta. Okay, now our y coordinate, our y coordinate is r sine theta. So this is going to be 1 plus cosine theta times sine theta. So that's sine theta plus sine theta cosine theta. And dy over d theta is equal to doo -doo -doo, cosine theta minus, yeah, have to do a little bit of, I'm going to pause while I do some um, product rule.